Protein quality doesn't matter. Actually, yes, it does. No, the truth is both are true. What depends on is how much protein you intake. If you take in a high amount of protein, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, the quality of the protein doesn't matter. If your protein intake is below that, then it definitely makes a difference. So if you weren't confused before this podcast start, you are now. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Welcome to the show. Yeah. No, so studies done on protein. There's a lot of studies done on protein, athletic performance, muscle building. If your protein intake is within what they would consider that optimal range, which is roughly around one gram of protein per pound of body weight in normal weight individuals, then whether it's from plant, egg, whey, animal, like as long as they're complete proteins, doesn't make a difference really. It's going to utilize it all the same. But if it's below that, then it makes a difference. Then if you find, let's say you're eating half that amount of protein or less, well then animal protein is superior to plant protein. So when I used to train clients, I focused a lot on protein quality because it was almost impossible to get clients to eat, you know, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. But if I was training like a bodybuilder or like a fitness fanatic, I didn't, I didn't care so much about what kind of protein they took in. Now, where does where do amino acid supplementation fit into this? Amino acid, there's a lot of studies on amino acid uh, uh, intake, branched amino acids, essential amino acids, and it doesn't make a difference if protein intake is high. Mm -hmm. If protein intake is low, branch chain amino acid intake or essential amino acid intake makes a big difference. So if you're one of those people that just eats low protein, supplementing with those things can really make a big difference with recovery. But if your protein intake's high, you're, it's it's literally burning money. So right, we, but I think it, with that in mind, like uh, supplementing with protein powders versus amino, I'm just trying to think of the avatar of the person. Is it like the ultra endurance runner that may, you know, benefit more from also supplementing with aminos or is it just like i focus on getting protein uh exclusively and it's going to cover it yeah i i so when i train endurance athletes uh i would have them take because one 10 grams of whey protein will have more branch amino acids than you know four branch amino acid pills so i would have them do that right but you know who used to benefit the most from amino acid supplements were my vegans because they had a tough, now if I could talk them into taking like a vegan protein, yeah. like if we had Organifi back then with their, you know, vegan protein that tastes amazing, I would have been like, take Organifi protein. But a lot of them just, it was tough for them to get the right amount of protein. Protein supplements back there were terrible. The vegan sources were terrible. They tasted like garbage. They couldn't take whey because it was animal sourced. Yeah. So I'd have them supplement with essential amino acids or branched amino acids. They would notice a difference. But their intake was slow, you yeah. know? So is this is it still a thing that in some gyms and bodybuilders will still kind of sip on their amino drinks yeah. in between sets and whatnot? Is that like... Waste. Yeah, yeah that, waste. that's still... Especially for that group. Because that group ain't missing their protein intake. No, you know they're not. not. They're not. They're not missing their protein. Now, when I was at, when I was in my early twenties, I used to take uh, branched chain amino acid pills, like six to eight of these things at night, and I used to do it when I, you know, either you know knew for sure or had a feeling I didn't hit my my protein intake. <clears throat> but based off of what you're saying, I would have been far better off, you know, taking a scoop of Organifi better. protein powder. And mixing it with water real quick and yes. chugging that down, then swallowing the six to eight pills. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's the part where I think people are mistaking the advice that we give. It's not so much that, you know, branched chain amino acids don't work at all. It's just that, well, what they do in comparison to something like a half a scoop of protein powder would do, it's like you're going to get as much, if not more, benefits from that. And if you're using it with that in mind, like, oh, I'm taking these pills because I don't think I got enough protein intake for the day. Okay, well, instead of doing that, go get yourself a scoop of whey protein mixed with water, slam it real quick, and you're going to get more benefits. Yeah, like, Doug, maybe you can look up how much leucine is in 10 grams of whey protein or something like that. Like, you're going to get more leucine, isoleucine, and valine, which are the branched amino acids, in five grams of whey protein than you would from, you know, five pills of branched amino acids. Now that's whey. What about something like Organifi? It's going to have a lower amount of branched amino acids, but still a lot because they're complete proteins, yeah. you know? So you look at 10 grams of protein from plant-based proteins, you're still going to get two or three grams of, of branched amino acids in there, which would be a lot of pills, right? So, yeah. and, and all the other essential amino acids, which also have benefit. And then the non-essential ones, which if your protein intake is not at that optimal rate, like all the amino acids make a difference. So eleven percent of uh, of whey would be leucine. So that's you know that's that's a that's a lot, right? Yeah. So people, yeah, like I had, I remember one person in particular was a friend of mine. We would do jujitsu together. He was a vegan, 
And, you know, we were talking about this once and I would tell him about protein and he goes, well, I don't like, you know, all the protein powders that are vegan taste disgusting. You know, he's like one of those guys that just, you know, people are super fitness fanatics. We tend to like not care about the taste of stuff, but he's like, they're gross. Like, and, and I was, you know, we're talking about his diet and I figured oh, he's probably only eating like 60 grams of protein a day. He's a 200 and something pound guy. So I said, take branched amino acid pills before and after jujitsu and see if you notice a difference. And he's like, bro, game changer. Now, he would have noticed way more of a game changing, you know, uh, effect if he just took the protein powder. Yeah. Protein yeah, powder. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, protein quality, it, it, it mattered to the clients that I trained because getting the, a client to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight was like, it was so hard. It was so hard to do because it was it's so satiety producing and people don't realize how hard it is. You know, even 130 grams of protein, uh, you know, for somebody who's 150 pounds, it's a lot of protein. I yeah. guess you could make the case then for somebody who is an athlete. <clears throat> like I, I'm thinking back to when I was playing basketball a lot and lifting weights and struggling to build muscle that I probably would have benefited from taking the branched chain amino acids before and after the workout, knowing that 60% of the time yep. um, I'm only hitting my protein intake. And so sure, you know, half the time I'm taking it and it's not really doing anything for me, but at least I'm getting it on the other half of the time when I'm, I'm definitely low. And so there's yep. some, there would be some value there. Cause I guess that's the case uh, where I see, and this I is also, why a lot of people see value when they supplement with right. it. And I see, and I understand too, the idea of, you know, consistently taking something. So you, you get in the routine and habit. So, okay, good. You hit your protein intake. Yeah. I'm kind of wasting money by just taking these six to eight pills today, but I'm staying in the routine of doing that because I know overall, I tend to miss consistently. And so then there's, there's some, well, what's there. easier, you, you know, you guys trained lots of people like I did, like what's easier getting someone to take, you know, five pills before their workouts or get hit their protein intake targets, five pills. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is why so many people are like, Oh, I see the studies. That's why on. it's such a big market. That's why it sells. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It works because people don't hit their protein, but if you hit your protein targets, then it's a waste, total waste of money. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, MAPS Powerlift. If you want to potentially win this program, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this is the final day for the February special. MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, and MAPS It, all 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below and use the code FEB50 for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of nasty stuff, this is a bit of an aside to that, but it reminded me of uh, when we used to play in the An One tournaments. This, this is like a long time uh, ago, the very first, you know, three on three tournament. This is where they rolled out the, the first version of Power Bar. And so they like cut oh, it up yeah. and they're ha handing it out as like samples. And Dude, that was so disgusting. And it was like a it, it was like a little brick and it was just like tasted like cardboard basically, but like that was like the big hype and everything. It was like apple cinnamon and you know, it was supposed to be like get you protein and get you all these nutrients and everything to to you know fuel your your performance and your game. And uh I just was remembering like, wow, like this is this is fucking that's awful. gotta be who owns power bar? Yeah. Sorry. That that's right gotta be the, the uh the first mainstream Gatorade, maybe energy bar or yeah. the first mainstream. Yeah, that's right. Like, they market as an energy bar. Yeah. It was yeah. like the first mainstream, like, like meal replacement slash energy bar slash protein. Who owns bar. them, Doug? It looks like post, like the oh, yeah. cereal. Oh, like post oh, cereal? cereal? Oh, yeah. They didn't own them originally. They probably Oh, Nestle. Them. Nestle. Of course, oh, Nestle. Yeah. There you go. I, so I used to eat power bars, which were mostly carbs and anything like eight grams of protein, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe look it up the macros. I wonder if they change them, but. I used to eat Power Bars as a kid because there's still 10 grams of protein. It was a supplement. They do make, they actually, Power they Bar a makes a 20 now. gram one. They do have a higher one. They still have their original 10 gram ones, I think. Yeah, they were like sweaty. Yeah, they were <laughs> sweaty. You know what I'm talking about? They were so oh, the chewy. It was just like, man, they've come so far. Like now you get like Quest bars. Now, okay, it tastes like cake. Okay, that being said though, I I trust what's that it's better for you than some of these bars. Like the that nutrients are probably actually in there. Yes, yeah. like that's. I feel like you know what? It probably had what it said it had in there. Where a lot of these bars now are like glorified candy bars. You want to know? Totally. With you candy know bar what? with some protein in Bro, it. Bro, I right? had an aha moment when I was uh, I want to say 15 or 16 when I started to learn about macros and stuff like that a little bit on my own. And then there was, uh, I was watching the world's strongest man, Mario, Mario's uh, Pujanowski. I don't know if you guys know who that guy yeah. was. He won a couple tournaments, looked like a bodybuilder. So he didn't look like a strong man, looked like a bodybuilder. 
and and they had listed his diet, and he ate like I want to say like five or six Snickers bars a day, <laughs> and I remember being like he eats all that candy, what the hell? And then I remember like I got a Snickers bar and I got a Power Bar, yeah, and I it's compared like the them, same macros, and I was like, yeah. well, it's, it's almost the same, man. Yeah. You got and I was that like, I'm just eating Snickers. Totally. Bars. You figured that out. It took me till I was in my twenties. I was actually reading the back of a, a Detour bar. And I, and I remember grabbing it, and for some reason, I, either my buddy or someone else had like a Snickers bar or something, and I remember looking back, and it was like, oh, my God, the only thing that Detour, Detour bar had was 10 more grams of protein. Yeah, but I'll see two Snickers. Yeah, than the Snickers <coughs> bar did, and I thought, oh, that's so funny. I mean, Was, that's that, your, was that your guys' favorite candy bar when you were kids, Snickers, or was it uh, something else? No, um, I wasn't a big Snickers guy. I like guy. Snickers. I, you know, it was always the peanut butter chocolate combo, so it was, for me, it's always been Reese's, oh, but yeah. yeah. Like uh, I would, I would reach for that sometimes. I like the baby. The, was it Baby Ruth? Baby uh, Ruth? Yeah. Oh hell no! With yeah. coconut? Well, no. Maybe no, Milky no, no. Way. Is it Baby Ruth? Almond Zul Joy. No. Oh, baby that's Ruth. Almond Joy. Yeah. That's right. Oh, Gross. oh yeah. Baby Ruth is uh, like a peanut and it's caramel like, and it chocolate. Was, right? No, it was basically like a like a peanut nugget thing with like surrounded with a bunch of peanuts and salt. You guys remember that? Oh uh, yeah. It was actually pretty good. Mm. The Almond Joy has got to be if the you ever want to if you ever want to divide a crowd. Yeah. No. Bring up Almond Joy. Or Mounds, right? With the um, It was the coconut that yeah. was in there. Like, ugh. Oh, yeah. And that's Almond Joy, isn't it? Is it Almond Joy is the same Joy's one, but it's got an Mounds almond on the down. top of it. Oh, that's the difference. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mound is no no. Nut. Remember when you were a kid and you, you used to go uh, trick-or-treating and you'd get those? Oh, yeah, so yeah I just off. throw them. You're trying to train them? <laughs> you got all these blue ones over here uh, nobody wants? <laughs> did I tell you guys for my birthday that Jack, what Jackie sent me? Did I tell you guys? She listens to every episode. She, I think she's listened to... Did she give you like circus peanuts or something? Yes. So she's heard she's heard us <laughs> talk about on the podcast how I like cheap candy. Yeah. Like uh candy corn and circus peanuts. And I got a package at my house. Like those gummy cokes. And, and it was that, like it bottles. was a bunch of circus peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica's like, what? Oh, wow. those are gross. Oh, Me and Aurelius yeah. are like, yum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he liked them too. <laughs> so good. Dude, I I have to bring this up because here, like, go ahead and timestamp like Adam was right. Finally it happened. What? Finally happened. it happened. Happened. Yes. Shut up, dude. I, you, <laughs> somebody out there is tallying this up, and like, this is a lot closer than these motherfuckers make it sound like. This is Wait, about the wood shop teacher. I mean, yeah, the wood shop teacher. Oh right? yes, you see that circulating now. You yeah. know, that, still people don't know. I sent it over to my aunt, and then they're like, "What? Are you sure?" And well, I'm there's like, pictures, so like, I, I mean, I kind of read a little bit. Okay, so it. the reason why it's the reason why it's not fully surfaced is because he's not going to win his court case if he does. Uh, I was just explaining that to my aunt. They're like, "Are you sure uh, that he's okay. not like this is true?" And I'm like. Well, he's in. I guess he's in the middle of like a, a, a court case with the school the, district. The school district, and obviously, if he's just fucking around and trolling, he's going to lose his case. Like that's his so, way of. Yeah. So this is the woodshop teacher, and I, I don't remember what school is a Canadian school he's in, in Canada who showed up to school with prosthetic boobs that were gigantic, with big old yeah. pokey out nipples. The zooms wore like wore like a like a real thin you know shirt over it, and yeah. the the school was like. Uh, He's identifying this way, like we can't kick him out. Do you so. know it's a real condition that he's identifying us to? What is it? Oh yeah, it's like it's, look it up, Doug. It's like uh, gi gi that article. Big titis. No, it's no, it's like it's called like giantism or something like that. And Giant, it's like and it's like a, like it, 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 it like a very very small <laughs> percentage of the population have it. And so he, like, he literally, like, the dude did his homework before he did. It's a yeah, massive so, troll. So the theory, exactly, wow. the theory that you said, which we all, which I was like, I don't know if that's true, was that he's doing this because he's trying to, like, he knows that they can't get rid of him if he does this because apparently they were trying to get rid of him, so he did this. But they caught him off yeah. campus. People are taking pictures of him. He doesn't wear these things outside of school. So any of the, even though yeah. I couldn't confirm this when it, or when it first came out, I did – watch or read i don't even remember where i saw it but i remember uh watching or reading uh this clip on hit a student that was in his class and said they knew him and was like this is not this teacher this yeah. teacher is like the total opposite of this, and he's been caught saying things. Well, and your so point of him being a woodshop teacher, and like <laughs> you know, I've been in a lot of like classes like that and industrial arts, and there's not a whole Listen, lot of. Uh, that energy. Let's just say. Well, let's. <laughs> I there. mean, okay. I mean, statistically speaking, uh, what what is the the teacher to Plus like, it's, like the, dude? He's, he's going to saw the, him off. The liber the liberal to conservative ratio is like seventy thirty, right? Of like liberals to conservatives in the in the school in school districts, right? Something like that. It's something like totally lopsided. Yeah. The thirty percent, I would 
argue cam- comes from your wood shop class yeah. and you're like with your mechanic. Some English teachers are also football you know, coaches <laughs> dude. or something. So when I heard that in the I was like, come on, dude, I don't this and it seems so so crazy and extreme. What was well, like this guy like slowly trans? Well, what a great way to po- I mean, if it is in- indeed, if that's indeed what he's doing, what a great way to poke fun at the whole thing. Totally. Because it's think about it this way. If it's if true. it was a woman, did you look up the, the, the condition? There's breast fetishes. No, 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 no. Did you okay? Did you look at the first of all? Wow. There was huh? You, you sent Doug down a rabbit. Thank hole. you, producer too. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Andrew? Tweedledee. Oh, oh, you're not. Oh, you're, oh, the other producer turned <laughs> you turned off. Huh? off. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> sorry, Andrew. Censorship going on over here. Wait, wait, hold up. What was it? Gigantomastia. 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 Right? And what, and what percentage of? Let's take it. Characterized by excessive breast growth. But that's excessive breast gro- growth, but not necessarily wanting big growth. So that's what no. he claims to have, though. Oh, I see. Even though the prosthetic. He's real and he's, 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 okay, he's got it. Right. <laughs> so he claims uh, to be they're, they're real. And so that's like his, oh, whole, okay. his whole case is on that. So if he gets caught saying that it's all a massive troll, it's, Sorry, he's, yeah, it's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. So I, I like yeah, phantom I, breaths. So I think he's been in hiding until all this, all this. Yeah, because what's funny, what's funny about this is if a female teacher showed up and she wore a tiny thin shirt over her boobs, she would have got reprimanded. Yeah. But because he is a he and he puts them on and says this is how he identifies, they don't know what to. And I, I, it would be like, do you think? Do you think uh, the opposite of that would would uh, they would have got away with it in terms of like a woman then having a humongous prosthetic dick if she said i identify this way then they'd be in a, in a just in wearing a bind. like gray sweats yeah i think they, class. i got gray sweats on yeah. right now yeah. <laughs> i had to point that out <laughs> stop uh don't I, zoom okay i mean that's 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 interesting yeah. so you're, it's funny because when you said that i was like no like oh my god that's i mean crazy. it was the first thing that came to mind for me i just thought this is too over the top ridiculous and, and this is what what inevitably was going to happen with how ridiculous this was getting was you know, sooner or later, somebody was going to push the limits and be like, okay, if you continue going down this rabbit hole, like what, what comes out of this? And then it's like, how are you going to, how are you going to push back on? Well, it was like interesting because also that reporter, like this is too, where we're like, oh, wow, this, maybe this is a troll, but it was actually a reporter that then dressed exactly like him in costume with the got on prosthetic Fox. Yeah. And went into the, uh, they had like a, um, a, a teacher uh, board meeting with, with the parents and was kind of presenting this and like everybody left and nobody wanted to like acknowledge uh (laughs) his presence or anything and like and so it was it was interesting because you know the rules were all there within the setting of the school but then once the parents were involved it was like scatter you just all you have to do if you want to like deal with this is be consistent that's it just be consistent whether they're real or they're fake whether you identify one way or another if it's if it appears inappropriate and it's inappropriate that's all that's how you do it, yeah. but they're 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 so scared and everything's so touchy that because of the situation, they they let they, they well. There's already alone. standards for 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 women too, and their dress That's code I mean. wise, yeah. So it's like I don't understand what the disconnect it's was. So silly. Yeah. Speaking of of big things, uh, do you guys read the study on Coke, <laughs> <laughs> Coke and Pepsi? I did. I did see that. I already saw uh, Lane was quick to debunk. Well, it really so quick. so here's this is okay. So we're gonna go with the hilarity of it, and then we're gonna talk about the conspiracy theory around it. So the study says the title of these articles say that uh, Pepsi and Coke lead to larger testicles and higher testosterone rates. Okay. Now, if you look at the study, let's break down the study first. The study was a, I think, a 16-week study on mice. Okay. Sorry, 15-day study on mice. <laughs> Even worse. Uh, now, now, forget the fact that every study ever done on soda on uh, humans shows lowering testosterone, higher fat, you know, body fat uh, levels, worsening health. Right. This 15 day study done in China. So we're going to have fun with this, Justin. Oh, done in China shows that, that the mice had higher testosterone and larger uh, testicles. Okay. <laughs> one, I wouldn't trust the study yeah. at all because <laughs> so I'm already shelving that. Yeah. One. It's 15 days and it's mice Two, Here's a conspiracy theory. I think they're putting shit out like this. Two reasons. One, media is about clickbait, so it's a clickbaity article. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they don't say it's mice. Fifteen days, they just say Coke makes your balls bigger, whatever, and everybody wants to click on it. Two, I think they're trying to make everybody just sicker and fatter yeah. by missing by by misleading everybody yeah, and just, saying 
drink more soda. misinformation. That's the weird conspiracy articles. theory, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I think that's cr that's crazy, but possible. Lane did a really quick breakdown on it, and one of the and there's several things that he pointed out, but the one that's like so obvious to me that I right away was questioning is just that there's no there's zero data around the nutrition. Yeah. Oh, they don't know what else they did, or yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, what if somebody like excess excessively ate one day or one the other group didn't eat hardly much and they just drank like all that stuff would impact that for sure the other so thing it's ridiculous that you didn't even control and, for that. and the other part of it is uh you, we have a i don't know philosophical and economic rival like china <clears throat> it's not hard for them to put out bullshit studies knowing that our media is going to pick it up yeah. And it's going to cause some changes in people's behaviors or what, prevent changes. Was in this a study behavior. done there? Yes, yeah. it was. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's that's why I said that. Oh, that's I said. interesting. Oh, I didn't because it's not hard for them to put out knowing that our media is going to pick it up because we have free media here and people will read it and click on it. We don't filter it. I mean, this is just one more step towards what we talked about before, which is just the distrust in everything. I, we're, we're, we are not far from articles and studies that, that get promoted or shared and just people automatically always defaulting to, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't believe I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to believe anything first and you're going to have to confirm or prove to me the validity of anything that I see on the internet anymore. And That's then people are just going to keep, uh, you know, screaming for some kind of like board to make sure that like all this misinformation is accounted for. And, uh, you know, only we're, we're going to filter through all this for you guys. And like who makes up this committee and like, dude, how much trust does the, the American public yeah. have at this point in any kind of like, uh, uh, you know, board of, of, of yeah. group of people. Yeah. So this is where, this is where I go with my consent conspiracy theory is that the goal is to create so much mistrust that there's more more regulation media, more groups to be so that they can that they they, they can gain support yeah. for regulated media that's it because then they'll i mean i don't say, even think that that's not a conspiracy theory that's just that's like the playbook 101 for government yeah i mean that's the way you get government to that's i really how far are you in the all-in rate latest podcast oh i'm only halfway because that's that's kind of like like friedberg's big uh thing because he's like He's, he challenges the other guys. He's like, listen to everything that we talk about, like the eight the topics we have today. All of them are like, we're, we're frustrated about what's going on here, here, and all of it we're, we're pointing in the direction of who are we blaming? We're blaming like yeah. a, a side of the government, and which is then it, what the only result, uh, the, the re resolution to that is to create some sort of regulation around that. Add which more. Would then, would, yeah, add more. And he's just like, I don't. I don't think that's the the way we solve this, and I think we have to be careful of every time something goes wrong that we immediately want to blame a side. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. left or right, but we want to blame a side and and pick out a boogeyman, and then okay, how do we resolve this? Oh, we need to have more regulation around this, which then in turn creates all these this this and boardroom. It just seems of people. like it's been escalating in terms of like real events that we need news reporting on that we're not getting any news reported on, like. Yeah. You well, know, you know this event in, in Ohio. Yeah, you know it's like, filling that that hole. Um, and this is why I, I'm I'm such a big believer in markets. Like when social media, when it was coming out that they were censoring uh, quite a bit, and it was kind of leaning into one direction or whatever, and people were like, you know, people on one side were saying we need more regulation, and the other side was like it should be free, which is funny. When it's when it goes in your way, yeah. leave it. When it doesn't go your way, we need more regulation. And I was always like, let's see what the market does because there should be a market demand and signal for something that's more open. Sure enough, Twitter gets bought by Elon. Twitter becomes more quote unquote open. If you, maybe you believe that, or maybe you believe it goes in another direction. That's fine. This is, these are market signals. So with media, what's happening now are what are known as citizen journalists. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing more people go to these places, these report, sub and yeah, stuff. sub stacks, yeah. <clears throat> reporting themselves, posting themselves on social yeah. media and journalists who now no longer work for a media organization, but go off on their own mm -hmm. and just become independent journalists. There's a few of them that have done really well. There's, a, there's one guy who's, he's been on Joe Rogan's podcast a few times. Can't think of his name right off the, off the top of my head, but you, you have that? Matt yeah, yeah, Matt Taibbi. Taibbi. He is on his own, a, just a journalist by himself, doesn't work for anybody. And he's- He helped with a lot of the Twitter leaks, right? Yes, yeah. and, and, and he, I love that. He, he's much more independent. He doesn't have- it doesn't seem like he has as big of a bias. He doesn't have to necessarily listen to. Well, you know, that's also an example of just allowing the free market to do its thing right. too. Instead of getting, instead of being so, and that's including how we, you know, we're guilty of 
the you know freaking out over what was happening with Twitter and stuff. Well, eventually, what happened is that shit gets out, and yeah. then people like this that are reporting on their own, and there'll be a com <clears throat> there'll be a, a competitive market for it if you allow that to take place. But if we scream and we freak out. And then we demand answers, demand change, demand regulation. Well, then that we just grow government that way. Yeah. And so, is that really the best answer? And I don't, I don't think it is. You know? No, because uh, you know, if you, if people who don't trust the market, which is basically consumers, they say, well, we can't trust consumers. Well, that's a huge base of people. You're looking at millions and millions of people. You could put more trust in millions of people because there's more likely to be more honest people within that. Just like there's dishonest people than trusting a few, mm -hmm. right? A few in power. So we got 10 people now who control all this information. Well, that can really go sideways. Yeah. And historically, it's it's proven to be true. So There was an interesting um, little kind of conspiracy in terms of um, uh, on Netflix, there's this, this um, I think it's a movie or a show, it's called like White Noise. And it literally predicts like pretty closely to like the East Palestine stuff that's oh, going yeah. on there. So th uh, there was this truck, this tanker truck that like slams into a... A, a train and then it derails and then all of a sudden like all of these chemicals spill out and, and then they blow it up so all this uh basically gets played out in this tv show or, or movie and then we we see it in the news cycle and it's like it's pretty eerie that is weird yeah. well what is that call worth and they, they talk about this with like with certain dates and stuff like that, that people have predicted a long time ago there's like so many things we have so many variables that if you cherry yeah. pick one from here like one the nostradamus effect he just like is that what says that's called there's a there's a there's like a there's i don't a, know if, but if it's called that but that was like the the main thing he just like covered so many <laughs> uh possible predictions that like Inevitably, right. and we're so big true. as a society. There's so many variables. There's so many moving parts that if you it might be named after the Simpsons, isn't there something after the Simpsons? Oh yeah, they've predicted so many things, dude. Because there's been so many episodes been on air for how many decades? I mean, that's a good example though of exactly yeah, totally. that, right? They've done they've done so many crazy things. It's like it's only a matter of time before you can. Like, didn't they predict Trump running for president? They predicted like terrorist attacks so. and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there's all kinds of Illuminati stuff in there. It's pretty hilarious. Did yeah. you guys see that? Uh, you guys, I, one of you guys, I heard talk about an aquarium who talked about the aquarium that you had just gone oh to? i had gone up you had just gone yeah. to the aquarium. you hear that uh maybe pretty soon here you won't be able to use your camera in there why so it's just somebody <coughs> took they were taking a, a picture and the flash from the camera blinded one of the fish and one of the fish sw swam and committed suicide in the glass boom and then like started ble bleeding and oh the, that traumatized wow. like all the kids that were watching. yeah look at the video Mommy. to like Flash kills uh, uh, or blinds and kills fish, and you see you watch the video. I mean, it like it slams in the glass, and then like blood starts coming oh, out. Oh, that would oh suck God. if your kids. Saw oh that. yeah, there was a bunch of kids all around and everything like that. <laughs> so yeah, they're talking, and then obviously there's a, obviously a bunch of people that you know are in. Uh, Which aquarium was it? Early. It's in uh, Okinawa in oh. Japan. Dude, uh, when that's you go, that's the video though. That top one, I can tell by the just the by the. When you go to these <laughs> aquariums and you see some of the sizes of these fish, you just realize how big some fish are. Like, oh, and it's not just sharks; it's like just regular fish, big ass fish. Oh, I, I remember the first time that like I saw a tuna. Fish. I, just, I had, yeah. I did, I would have never thought tuna because it comes in this little can. I remember oh. as a kid when you when you ate They're tuna huge. forever, and then yeah. the first time you saw like a tuna fish, you're like, oh shit, that's a why such a little can for such a big ass fish? Yeah, you know, <laughs> that, you know that their uh, tuna fish swim like incredibly <clears throat> fast, like some of the fastest fish. Uh, oh, look, there's the, the flash. Watch. Oh, that's terrible. No, no, no. Watch you see the see the fish freaking slam right into the right into the glass, and then the blood starts coming out of it. Oh, <clears throat> here's the crazy sad. thing: using a flash for pictures Stupid. in a glass, glass tank. Yeah, you're not yeah. gonna. He's gonna get a reflection. So. Oh, that's sad. It's well, you know, work. what are you gonna do? The whole thing is well, sad. You know, we got fish in a tank. We're just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> the they're pretty thing. big tanks, though. Yeah. Well, uh, they're massive tanks, but if you're a big whale shark, you know, it's probably not that yeah. much space. You know that. They, well, we, no, then they, then they shut down all the all the like sea world, like with the whales in there and stuff like that. That they don't have that. Do they still have them? Like in in. I don't in, know if they, small yeah, like that anymore. I, I know they definitely took a hit with attendance for like because of that Blackfish documentary. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if they actually like removed. You know, they've never been able to keep a great white in a tank in captivity for longer than I think like a couple weeks or whatever. For whatever reason, they can't figure out why they can't keep it alive. They'll give it food, they'll get everything, and for whatever reason, they just can't. Keep so that it just dies. White. It dies. Really, I think it has to do with something with the electrical 
signaling that it receives and you know how it reads things hmm. it can't quite figure out why you know what i think is wild is how they will like if you it, you buy a fish like that it'll grow to the size of the tank oh right so you could buy like a shark that could potentially get up to like five feet but you put it in like a little tiny tank it'll only grow so it only grows it's so like a big. metaphor for life yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. yeah, make your space bigger or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you guys know uh, one of the gyms. Did you guys neither Minimal one of resources? You, neither one of you ever worked at the Club Five Hundred Six, right, Sunnyvale? Mm -mm. So we there was there was a fish tank behind the front desk there. It was big. Was there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did did Capital McKee have a fish tank? No. Okay. So we had a big ass fish tank, and there was a shark in there. Someone actually maintained what? the fish tank at twenty four. They did. I did not. Know they that. had some random person did. come. There was a, there was a shark. There was an eel, a, a moray eel in there. And there was a clownfish. Wait, no, it was a clownfish. It was anyway blowfish. I, no, we used to. We we. I, this is terrible to say, but we were. You know, I was nineteen years old. I don't know any better. And feed you know, a protein powder, bro. We throw goldfish <laughs> in there. <laughs> we throw goldfish in there, protein, or like bro, a little piece of hamburger in there, now, dude. Fuck. And the, the moray eel protein. would come up and eat the you know the hamburger, and we think it all cool or whatever. And I, it's, I think one of them died. I think we might have killed one of the fish, dude. <laughs> I had Terrible a fish tank for a long time. They're hard to maintain, man. Saltwater is not easy. I, I killed so many fish. They're expensive. To, yeah, they're expensive fish. They're exp expensive to maintain, and I wasn't ready for it. I place. liked. Uh, I've always wanted koi, koi fish. They're worse to have. Why? Well, okay, in a tank they are. If you have yeah. them out in a pond, that's what. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not a big deal. I had. They're like dogs. They so cool in a pond. So they're because they're so. So I I, I don't know how many thousands of dollars i i spent on fi killing fish right trying to trying to figure the salt water thing out and eventually what i did is fuck this i poured it all out went back to freshwater and bought a bunch of koi thinking that was right but they shit so much it was my filter i was having to clean like every other day because of how much wow. they shit now they're super hardy fish and they could they'll they'll survive in almost anything but they shit like crazy and so if you have them in a tank it's like motherfucker to try every to decision you with. made at that age was based on how wow. cool it looked 100 percent, dude 100 percent. you all white yeah. house yeah all yeah. white furniture at one point I had, just, I had one yeah. i had one Chicks little sh one shark that was, yeah. used to be really cool and that i for a while I, he he survived but then it eventually uh, just, eventually i went on vacation or speak, something. speaking of fish have you guys ever i know butcher box is known for their grass-fed meats but have you ever gotten their some of their uh wild caught salmon I haven't done fish to them. I do I do chicken and obviously all their 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 red meat I do through them, but I have yet to do their fish. So we get their yeah. salmon because uh Aurelius will eat it and they flash freeze it. So flash freezing is better because it lowers the Explain that. Uh, so they, they it's frozen very quickly rather than slowly in like a traditional freezer. And that reduces the histamine production in the fish. This doesn't matter for most people, but for people with histamine intolerances, that, it makes it okay. Different. So uh, exp okay. Look at flash, flash, yeah, flash. Yeah, I know. Freezer. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand. So a traditional freezer, it takes a slow so, time, certain amount for the, of time. For the, and it builds up like crystals of so the meat. So is it? Can is the flash the freezing is like super, super cold? It's got to be like I believe, crazy cold. I believe so. That. I believe so. I'm having Doug look it up because I'm not quite 100 percent sure. What does that say? So yeah, freezing foods at extremely low temperatures with circulating air. There you go. So they call it blast freezing as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. oh, there you go. It keeps ice crystals small. Which prevents moisture loss in the food. So when you uh, when it's flash frozen, the meat of the the salmon tastes gets fresh a bit. It's Interesting, tastes fresh. I wonder is there like uh, at home versions of that that we could have like a flash? I, I would imagine if you flash froze anything, then it would be better than if you froze it traditionally for right? flavor. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's an at home flash freezer. Might be. There's got to be. What, that would, be, what, I mean, this might is, be dangerous. This is like a cool nitrogen. Doug gift right here. Doug would, would totally Yeah, I would love. do that. I know you Oh, would. how I to. Oh, it says right yeah. there, how to, how to flash free. So it's at home, involves quickly freezing uncovered pieces of food, then packing the frozen portions into air. I would like a think there's a, a piece of equipment, though. Yeah, I would think there's use. equipment, too. There's got to be like a like, like a vacuum sealer. Yeah, a mini, a mini version of this. There you go. What's a that, blast right? chiller here. You can Damn, get one. five grand? I don't know if I'm ready for blast a gift like chiller. that for you, Doug. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> Look how expensive they are. They must be good. Well, Doug would use something like that. He's I know. That's why. Well, I, I mean, I only have so much freezer space. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, speaking of... Uh, of, of butcher box i looked up today the omega-3 uh fatty acid content in grass-fed meat versus grain-fed yeah. you guys want to take a guess the difference ratio wise yeah okay 
a give me give me what yes. it is in in non. Well, I don't know what the the percent the it's amount like is. Yeah, I know how much more there is. Oh, what? How much? More? Five times as much. Five times. Five times as much wow. omega threes in grass fed meat than grain fed. And oh, then wow, CLA conjugated linoleic acid, which is a fatty acid connected to fat loss. In right. fact, people will supplement. Remember when you used to sell that? That used to be one of the top fat loss supplement sales. It's twice as high in uh, grass fed meat as in uh, grain fed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So all things being equal calories, everything being equal. If you ate a lot of grain fed versus grass fed meat, you're going to have a lot more of the healthy fatty acids in the, in the grass fed than you will. Well, I've been supplementing uh, with my fish oil uh, oh, ever yeah. since. Yeah. You know, well, and omega difference. threes are like one of the staple things you always hear either like a functional medicine practitioner yep. yeah. or a doctor will recommend is your vitamin D and omega omega threes are normally. So just by you eating the Grass fed beef, you're five times more. Five times more. That's yeah, crazy. That's a lot, as much as five times as much. Wow, that's Pretty lot. crazy. Uh, yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. So, sports guys, I'm going to ask you guys about, about um, this. What do you guys think about this? Jake Paul? It sounds, no, not that. So, it sounds like, uh, is it just me or like crazy, weird fight sports just emerging out of nowhere? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, we've been talking about this, like it's getting more and more like niche and, and weird, but you see this more, like it started out in Russia. They had these weird, like, like, uh, fights where they, where they'd have like a few guys fighting a few guys and they had like platforms where they yeah. would jump off or then they were like in full armor and knights yeah. fighting each other. Yeah. And now, you know, the States were seeing slap boxing's a thing now. Pillow, there's a professional pillow fight league. Yes. There's a pillow. That one's stupid though. Professional. That's stupid. Hold on. I watched it. They I make it money they're stupid fighting with pillows like, like with you know hot, it's way cool you know it's no cool. it's dudes with pillows who wants to see that you know it's way cooler than that have That's you seen a, have you seen the jujitsu in your car yeah that one's that, one's <laughs> yeah. that one is cool the two i like dudes, boxing the two in, guys, in the telephone booth they say i like that one too the two guys they start you have to and start your, your seatbelt seat seatbelt is on right <laughs> and then they go Arr! the horn goes you got to get out of your seatbelt and they go <laughs> yeah. so good Arm barge, so i would watch out. that i would watch that that yeah. to me is way the pillow fight's lame though yeah. i mean it's dumb pillow fight league they're literally That's embarrassing it like, is embarrassing I, when Seriously. i first saw it i'm like what they put in the pillows like so yeah exactly like rocks they put in there no it's a pillow and they're black each other with the pillow how yeah, do you win it's dumb oh man yeah, that, i used to that when dumb. i so you guys when you were kids sleepovers you guys do pillow fights right of course why you guys why you guys shake <laughs> your head silence. hold on a second we'll go ahead and uh, second, oh, we're going to leave you on an island on that one bro <laughs> hold on a second you never you guys you that's bullshit. <laughs> you guys never, oh, bro, you, you, you never, bro, you, you never hit your friend in the head. With the pillow <laughs> you guys, just you, you never bro. Did mud masks. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. You guys ever play doctor? You guys <laughs> ever, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> hold on a second. Hold you guys ever used to play telephone? <laughs> you, you, tickle party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys never had tickle. You guys ever played? Does that tickle? <laughs> <laughs> tickle time. Yes. Anybody? Hey, too close. Hey, did you play too close. Shut your face. <laughs> You're such a such an asshole. Oh, man. Oh, sorry, you say so much for that one, dude. Listen, I was going to say this. Uh, <laughs> you get a pillow, a down feather pillow. You can squeeze all the feathers to one side. You can hit someone pretty hard with that. I mean, thing. yeah. That's all. You can make but it I, hurt, uh, but uh, yeah. It would hurt enough. It would hurt. Yeah. All oh, I'm saying is, all I'm this. saying is, <laughs> if we got a pillow fight, I'd do pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I, I trust you on that one. Dude. I set myself yeah. up. Oh, you did, bro. <laughs> that one. That was oh, good. Oh, oh, anyway. <laughs> so good. Anyway, I want to yeah. hear. I want to hear what you had to say about uh, the Chat GPT because I oh, yeah. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of the the conversations that I heard Chamath have on our show. And so, what did you see, or what uh, are you reading as far as? So I read this article <laughs> written by um, some economists who also worked in the tech industry. And they were saying how it's a big bubble because right now these are basically predictive computers that predict what you think it would what, it, what it's supposed to say. And because they're fooling us into thinking that they're giving us new information, we're overvaluing its value or, or, or overestimating its potential value. And it's like it's not creating anything new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it because it comes across a particular way, all this money is pouring into the space. And he's saying it's a big bubble that's going to pop. That's 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 what I was. So I don't. I, so do you disagree? Do you agree? Because I know we've. I mean, all I think it's a bubble just because everyone's excited. So I kind of agree. I don't know if I'm overvaluing its value. Okay, I so I, I I agree. So I so I've I, that, but that doesn't take away from anything that I've said in the past about how unbelievable it is. 
But I think the point that you're making is so true. I think like anything else, when we see new technology or that that the uh, entire, I mean- the It's like account, NFT, crypto. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, but okay, no, no, no. I wouldn't put it in that category of a bubble. Like, so Chamath was in this interview and he talked to, uh, he was talking to, I can't remember who he was talking to, but he re uh, referenced something that Warren Buffett said. And Warren Buffett made this comment that uh, the guy who, in, whoever invented refrigerators uh, made a lot of money. But uh, the company Coke, Coca-Cola, who utilizes the refrigerator, made way, made more, money. way more money. Oh, yeah. Mm. And, it, and he used that, that analogy referring to chat GPT and AI right now. And so th the technology is going to be revolutionary like the refrigerator. I really believe yeah. it's going to be like that. But the companies that are going to make the huge money are the companies that find ways to utilize that technology to further advance their industry or however, right? Oh, that's interesting. Which I totally agree. Like we're I mean, <sighs> we're, sense. we're moving in that direction. I think that if we can utilize some of it, uh, its abilities, it's going to enhance our business to another level and give us the competitive mm -hmm. edge compared to somebody else that may be doing something similar. So I see it like that. And and so I do believe it's still that amazing. I wouldn't put it on the NFT, which I think that's just a, a complete trash. Well, no, no. The well, reason I can see it being more as like an upgrade to the current way that we use the internet, right? Like in terms of like... Uh, I have to go through and like manually put in the search and you know, yeah, now you can do kind of voice to text and you can, you can Siri it and all that, but like to be able to have an answer, you know, at that speed. And then, you know, as a, as a business owner, be able to use that and it sort of answers for you and represents you. Uh, I mean, that's just going to speed up all kinds of uh, production. Yeah. The reason why I, I said NFTs and crypto is the technology blockchain technology Definitely is going to be here and it's going to be utilized in, in ways that'll be revolutionary. The bubble was that everybody jumped on board and said, it's this crypto or this NFT or this is what's well, I mean, we don't now, know. Now you're comparing two different things, in my opinion. Like, so <clears throat> the block talking about the blockchain that's what is, I is one thing. That's what I meant. Uh, NFTs are utilizing the blockchain. Yeah, that's, that's to me is, yeah. is, is a different situation. It's like NFTs and crypto. Um, I'm less of a believer in it. And that's, that doesn't mean that both those technologies, by the way, won't exist. I think the way that we use NFTs I, 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 with with cars, Rolex watches, I see all kinds of value in utilizing. But it turned into this like this art movement of just everybody creating this stuff. And it, and it, yeah, it, and anytime there's a new innovative uh, technology, it usually starts out in a bubble because there's a lot of hopes and dreams, and, and and a lot of things have to get ironed out. Like there was a tech bubble, there was a dot com bubble. Remember yeah, that when right. like website, anything that said dot com generated or or got, I should say, tons and tons of investment dollars. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like the next big thing. Anything that said dot com. And then it popped because, you know, it has to get washed out. You have to see what's actually sticking and what doesn't stick. So I I, I agree with that with the the AI bubble in that sense. That everybody's throwing money in. Mm -hmm. but they don't quite know where do you not, it's going to uh, Do you not like the Warren Buffett? I love the way Warren yeah. Buffett said I mean, I just think that's a great way to look at it. It's yeah. like, it is that big of a deal. Like imagine before refrigerators yeah. and then uh, the, that technology coming around, like how how incredible that was for everybody. I uh -huh. think that what we're seeing with ChatGPT and these, these AI services is like that. Yeah. But the people that are going to make the huge oh. money are the, are the companies that find ways to utilize that technology. That's what's going to explode. Automating yeah. things and creating new products like through that, um, that, that platform is going to be real interesting to watch. Yeah. Increasing efficiency is a big deal. People don't realize how big of a deal that is. If, if you can increase the output per worker, <clears throat> Uh, by 10%, what that means for the for our own productivity, the economy, efficiency, uh, products, more innovation. I mean, that's- I think there's going to be more disparity, though. Tremendous. In terms of like people getting lazier and other people that are actually like productive being way more productive. Yeah. Well, you could, I mean, that's 100%. But that's, like but that's the, been with everything. Happen the printing everything. press, television, right, radio, yep. all, those, all those things, I mean, made smarter people, but probably made dumber people at the same time. Well, you're so. going to have a, a greater disparity, but everybody <clears throat> moves up. Because like poor like poor people today have yeah, more the, stuff. The base will go up always, with, yeah. but the very wealthy, they're they're the the wealth that they have now is just oh insane. my god. It's Although the separate. richest man in all of history was what's uh, the uh, railroad? Uh, no, and yes. all of no, it was in this African uh, oh, yeah, emperor. Uh, uh, 
Look up richest man in all of history. I've heard about. <clears> this. Oh, I thought it was. He it had the equivalent of X amount, like trillions. Talking like King Solomon or something? No, no, someone else. Oh, this is the Aya Sahara, right? Uh, it's like related to that. He was around that kingdom. Yeah, it was, it's like because of the amount of Mansa Musa. Yeah, look yes. up. What would his 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 value be today or modern day equivalent of four hundred billion? Oh, then he's not. But that was last year in November, so that's probably more like six hundred billion. <laughs> <laughs> he was the wealthiest man of all time, right? Uh, that's according to this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what, okay, so I'm just wondering because that was like um, near my, one of my favorite theories uh, for Atlantis was that I have Sahara um, that that's located um, you know somewhere up there in the northern part of Africa, but it's like a secluded area that looks like it has rings, just like uh, the concentric circles. You know how Plato describes that of for for Atlantis. Yes. Like they had like these yeah. waters. Uh, surrounding like these these concentric rings of of land, and so it was it like fit all the descriptions that he laid out there, and uh, there was like accumulated like the the most gold uh, in that area, and I th I believe this this who you mentioned was uh, in Kingdom. God there. damn, Justin, that was yeah, that was, that was great. Yeah, <laughs> just on point. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a hundred percent what I remember reading. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Dude. I don't know it, any of that. Well, I wanted to bring up. Yeah, <laughs> new I want, story for me. I get into You're this still shit. thinking about my pillow fights. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth, bro. bro. You killed me with that. <laughs> that's um, the truth. <laughs> anyway. I almost lost all track. Hey, are there are there people that are still finding like treasure and, and gold and random yeah. like yes dude does yeah. that still how how often does that happen mm, well, i don't, I don't think it happens a lot but there's actually expeditions out yeah. there looking yeah, yeah for, i know there's like, a lot of crazy, crazy i know treasure. there's a lot of crazy people that'll be that are treasure what, hunting what but yeah. i mean like yeah. how, how often does a treasure a treasure hunter find some sort of a treasure well see the, here's the problem with doesn't that. even that get big news Andrew. anymore either Done. yeah but here's the problem with that if you find yeah. ancient yeah, you have to give it to the government yes you find ancient treasure the only way you'll get rich off of it is by selling it on the black market. You mm -hmm. cannot do it legally because it is it'll be owned by the state. It's considered an artifact. Yeah. So if you find some like, you know, like thousands of year old artifact and you're like, oh my God, this is like priceless, you have to sell it on the black market to some collector for X amount of millions of dollars. Cause if you make it public, then it goes, you to don't think you can get, you don't think you can get away with saying it was passed down to your, your, in your family or something <laughs> no. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's how I would do. Yeah, Find bro. this big old box of gold pieces. I'd be like, yeah, that's my great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah, he saved it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Schaefer's. Let's yeah. see. Here. Yeah. No, <laughs> you guys did it. Not believable. You guys did, did you look that. up how many treasure hunters find their treasure? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of treasure being found <clears throat> according to this. Um, America's most successful treasure hunters have discovered hundreds of millions of dollars worth of lost gold, jewels, and other precious wow. artifacts. So there are people out there who are successful. How, you know, half the of the Gulf fun, of I would think of finding something like that would be to be able to reap some of the benefits. You got to give it away. You don't get to, you don't get if to. If it's an artifact, it's not yours, dude. Yeah. Oh, and technically, you have to give it well, to the possessions state. nine tenths of well, a lot of times they'll give you like a finder's <laughs> fee, you know, like some reward. Um, so. They'll give you like something out of it, like consolation like prize, hug. you know, yeah. like for for Good job for doing it. But yeah, you article. have to give the majority of it to the local government where it's, uh, you know, yeah. Located. Like if you found like a like a, a pharaoh's crown with like jewels on it, you yeah. ain't gonna make. It goes right to the museum. The, yeah. yeah, you got to go black market, dude. You got to yeah. sell it to some mob boss or something. Yeah, you don't. I was gonna say either oh. that or you just keep it in your family. Okay, so here's a <laughs> fact. This is what I wanted to bring up. Someone comes over your house. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Yeah. So <laughs> you, real. did you guys know? Okay. I already brought up the Sphinx is like, there's all this like mystery around it because it's just like the oldest, one of the oldest like man-made um, monolithic. Yeah. Like statues out there, but <laughs> things. so things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is one of the it oldest thing. things out yeah. there, right? <laughs> yeah. There's rocks that are older. Yeah. Than and that. so like, like Dr. Shock had come up with this whole theory about water erosion and all this stuff. It's controversial. Yeah. But what I didn't know was that it actually had a beard. Did you guys know that? It got had the beard get taken. Had eroded? like a, you know oh. how like like the pharaohs they had that like little yeah, that braided skinny thing. beard yes. goatee thing, right? So originally it had that and it, it had fell. Um, they reclaimed it and, and I think it's in the museum, uh, the British Museum. But I had no idea that they actually like confirmed that because it was speculated that what it used to look like. And so there's all these theories of like maybe it started out as a jackal, maybe it started out as a lion. And they changed it. And then they changed it. And so 
here's actually, and I actually subscribed to this and Courtney kind of like, uh, we were watching this documentary about all this stuff. And, um, it, she was like, I wonder if like they were trying to, uh, restore the original, maybe it was like this long jackal head. Um, and, uh, they, they were kind of carving it down and, uh, over time they made it look like this other Pharaoh. I forget the name of this Pharaoh, but cause you know how it doesn't have a nose. Yeah. Like they maybe they fucked up and, and you know, the nose fell and then they buried it because it's, it's proven that they actually like it, it was buried with a bunch of sand. And so it wasn't like just over the years, like all the sand just like covered it. Like it was deliberately buried. Yeah. So the theory is that the Sphinx was there way before the Egyptians. <clears throat> yeah. And they built over it and around it. And yeah. And then they carved the face to look like a Pharaoh, but you know, I you know, what's compelling to me is the water erosion argument. Nobody counters that. Yeah. Cause it, it's legit. Like if you know what water erosion looks like, I'm not an expert, but it looks just like that. <laughs> it looks like water was it was in water. Yeah, which would mean it's way older. Than well, the say. only people that have a problem with it are the Egyptologists because it 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 they'd have to write, rewrite their entire timeline. Damn, damn establishment. This is, this, this is what what's what's the hypothesis? That's say? what it looks like now. So it doesn't have a nose. <clears throat> so now you're saying that was all that was completely buried. Justin? Yes, yes, it was buried. They they literally like uncovered. I mean, I think the the top of the head might have been just barely sticking out, but but it was deliberately buried with sand. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's it, wild, dude. Yeah, so it's actually carved out of the the bedrock, I believe. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Hey, did you guys see that they're gonna they're gonna do another Starsky and Hutch? What? Yeah, remember the but, show Starsky and Hutch? Yeah, but is it the show or is it the movie that they recreated with uh, Wahlberg? Is it no, Wahlberg no, no. who was it's in Starsky sh and Hutch? I don't know if they who was what who was who was yeah it was Wahlberg was no, it was, it was the Magic Mike guy and um, oh yeah yeah um, yeah yeah the, the, what's the his used name? to be fat guy you know his name Jonah that's, Hill that's yeah the, Jonah Hill oh was no Jonah, was that that was twenty one twenty one oh Jones twenty one Jump Street my bad you're oh, right so I think <laughs> I think it was Wahlberg so they're they're redoing Starsky no, it was Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson wasn't it there yeah totally but they didn't call Star did they call Starsky and Hutch yeah they did yeah they there so they're doing a series they're gonna redo the series. And it's it's a remake. Uh, so the story is it's their kids, but it's their daughters that are now going to be the detectives or whatever. So there's all this uproar because they're remaking another show and making the lead female. So a, a male show that they're turning female, which is tends to be the trend. The trend. Yeah. Well, it worked for Ghostbusters. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I no, wish that you know. Really. You know what makes me upset Does about it that? ever work actually? Yeah, well, that'd be a good question. Which show did they ever do that that it worked? See, it's okay. Charlie's Angels was really good, but it, it was the original. Was that but the they same started way. out with that? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so, so it makes me think like, do they just not have any writers that can come up with original anything? Is yeah. it, it's always borrowing off old shit? Well, and they just I mean, change the gender. And you know, I know it? I I referenced the Hitmaker's book, and I, because it was such a great book, and it, and it it covers so much stuff like this that almost everything is, dude. Yeah. Like everything, everything is rooted. Very, very few people have like this completely random new idea. It's built well, off of- Because it costs more money. Not only that, but I mean, I just, we, we, we've- we Well, they we know as humans want well. that. That's yeah. the thing. So there we, has to be a predictive element we, to it. We, no. we want that. Like there's, there's a part of us in a story and in music that we want some familiarity to it. It, to be attracted to it. Otherwise, if it's completely like new and there's no there's no familiarity, there's it's very, harder. Yeah, it's much harder for people to even latch on to it. And yeah. so, I mean, it's it's a proven method. And so, of course, and it's time tested. So I don't, you know, I think almost everything we watch or seen. I mean, I remember that as a kid, right? I remember, I remember, you know, my uncle or whatever that would ruin movies for me all the time. Oh, the I, original was better. Yeah, I get all excited and he'd be like, "Oh, this is not the original," and I'm like, "What?" Like, there's always one before, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. They did do that even when we were kids. Yeah. Would you guys? What would be a a, sh a movie or show that you guys grew up with that you would love to see redone, remade, or a spinoff? You guys have any off the? Mm. I have one that I brought up before on the show that okay. I still wish a writer um, would just take Mickey, this idea and do right? it. Yeah. yeah, the story of Mickey. <laughs> of course, a spinoff more. Him more when he was a boxer. I thought that in actually the would be really I thought good. I heard that it, it was coming out. No, you know, I just did see speaking of the Rocky series. So that it's there's oh. another Creed coming. Is there? Creed? Yeah. Oh, it was like part three or whatever like of that. that. Yeah. Were they bad? Like you didn't like it that much? I wasn't a big fan. No, it was, it was all right. It was all right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I really was a big fan of Creed. And you know Rocky and and, and Apollo's. So I always you know, wonder, story. like, okay, okay, now has your has your boy watched all of them with you? 
He's watched uh, oh, Rocky one. Four. Goonies. I want to see that remade. That would be great. Yeah. Their kids. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. It'd be really cool. Yeah. I like. Goonies. I feel like kids today wouldn't watch it because they'd watch it and be like, this is so unrealistic. Yeah. These kids going around with no parents. Like, no one, no one's It'd start out with all of them on their phones, you know, and then. <laughs> That's what like, makes that stuff good for like, us. What are we going to do? That was realistic. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. a, there's a chance that you could get away all day like that. We're not like kids today because yeah. they would think it's not But that people. might be interesting, right? Breakfast it, like, club. It, like shows, you got to go out and explore. An I would adventure. love to see another Breakfast Club. That'd be kind of cool. Kids uh, going to detention, take your electronics away. I love those kind of movies i forget the director but they did a bunch of those so. i do i do appreciate when and i'm trying to think of an example kind of growing I, up I just high school watched movies. something like this where a a series or a show will uh will piggyback off of like an old one but then they will integrate like today's time and technology yeah. like i appreciate that like if there's like a story or a theme i've seen before i'm like oh i've seen this but now they've they've integrated like the phones and texting and like how that would have evolved or changed that storyline well, you Co does cobra that. kai yes did a you, good yeah job. use you, a good great example. you does that you on netflix uh, utilizes current technology i think that's why i like that dude it was a great the the latest you is great oh so bro. Yeah. so good so good uh, so good and i was like oh no it's only like four okay, episodes remember i was waiting five? for you guys to, to get to oh like, man they what did is a great it job. why is it that we like it so much uh, well, it, this one actually, I liked that they changed it up a little bit, but they made it more like murder mystery, yeah, you know, sort of style, which is it's fun, you know, and it's like, oh, who's who's the person? I think it's because the flawed hero, and he's very flawed. It, <laughs> it's it win. It's a winning formula, you know. It's a winning formula where it's like like the Sopranos was like yeah. that. Like everybody, you love Tony. Soprano. He's like he's tormented though. He's like he, he's. It's like you, you kind of want to think he's a good guy, but you know he's a killer. Yeah, you know, and you're like, uh, is he gonna go back to? But his everybody ways? he kills is annoying, or something about them you don't like. So you kind of like, eh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kill that person. Justified <laughs> a little bit, you know? I know. You know what's funny? You know what I pointed out? There's this scene in you, and I told Jessica, I said, watch. This is how funny, uh, the, like, consumers are. You know the scene where he's going hunting with that one dude? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they're shooting birds? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I bet you he they, they'll, they'll write in here that he doesn't shoot a bird because they know that the audience won't like him anymore. Sure enough, he refuses to shoot a bird. I'm like, he's a fucking murderer. The yeah. guy kills people. Yeah. But they know that if he shoots they a bird- They want to make him, exactly. That this nobody season, will like they him really anymore. wanted to make him likable. Yeah, people are like, oh, I don't like There's that guy anymore. There's a new twist. Oh, that's, funny is that? Oh, mm -hmm. so that's interesting. You took that take from that. You know what I took from that was that- the inner struggle to even want to kill. Like, it's not that he likes to kill. That's what I got from that. I got, that's what the, 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 the oh. writer was trying. I to, just got, he was trying to hide the fact to that guy that he knows how to shoot a gun and kill. Well, yeah. so yeah. So a little he bit of that too. He never gun though. Doesn't he? He never kills yeah. with a gun though. Yeah. That's, he always kills with like a knife or some knife. Yeah. I, I just felt that like, here's an Strangle opportunity him. where is he just killing a stupid bird, but then inside he has even a struggle to kill a bird. So I thought that's again, mm. another way for you to connect to him that oh he's not a bad yeah, guy because well, he, he also he kill. also makes the comment that he's uh, like uh he's I'm pro gun control or something like that with the guns like oh I hate holding this gun remember how you think you can hear his thoughts because uh, I'm pro gun control I'm like oh he's a serial killer like this is so funny yeah. <laughs> but Jessica said the same he's thing so virtuous oh, she, they're trying to show that he's conflicted so yeah you're probably right yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> that, that's a, that's the part that's or, I mean that's yeah. what I got from it I get where you're what you're saying too though but. I mean, again, what a good show, though. What a great yeah. show. The fact great that writing. It is incredible really writing. Great. And they and you're right. They are an example of how they use today's kind of technology in like with this, with a stalker and serial yep. killer. So yep. well, well, well done. Who do you got for a shout out today? All right. Today's shout out is Lane Norton. What's his handle? Bio Lane. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, he's science based uh, fitness um, advice and nutrition advice. And good friend. Good friend. Smart guy. Yeah. Uh, we like him a lot. Quality Lots stuff. of integrity. Yeah. Quality stuff. Check him out. Look, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest. If you eat a high protein diet, you may be noticing certain digestive issues like bloat. Uh, did you know that digestive enzymes can help you assimilate that protein? So more of the protein gets to your muscles, more of that protein gets to the areas you want. Also helps you break down carbohydrates and fats for more energy and better health. Well, there's a company we work with called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for fitness enthusiasts like you. If you're interested, go check them out. Go to masszymes.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Jeff from Texas. Jeff, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good morning. Good. Hey, so um, question about macros, um, specifically about which macro uh, I should I could I should focus on cutting out of my diet first when going into a calorie deficit or, or cutting phase. 
Uh, I've been in a been in a bulk for I guess or, or a, a calorie surplus for about six months now. Um, put on roughly about eight pounds, maybe uh, looking to cut about five percent of body fat. Um, get from fifteen to ten. Um, I hear a lot of things on the internet, uh, read a lot of things. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I, I trust you guys and I wanted to see what, what your guys is a take on, um, on that, that was any idea where you're at right now, as far as your macro breakdown, total calories. So I'm, um, I'm about 39, about 3,900, uh, calories, uh, about 250 on protein. Um, one, 120 in fats and about four four fifty ish, I think. Um if I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I think it's about four fifty in carbs. Nice. Um yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I, I weigh uh two two oh five was the last time I weighed in um uh Monday. Uh that that's I mean that's yeah that's, for me it feels kind of easy. I cut from carbs. Yeah. Your fat is fine. Okay. Uh I mean you can cut fat too, but the fat's already 120 at that many calories is, is I wouldn't cut it that Yeah, much. I wouldn't cut fats too much. You can cut a little bit, but I do it mostly right. from carbs. Here's the thing about carbs. Um they do fuel good workouts. They do help contribute to the pump. They can help contribute to muscle growth, just like all the macros can. But carbohydrates are not essential. So we have the most flexibility with carbohydrates. What that means is you could go zero carbs. I'm not saying that's where you should go, but you could go zero carbs and you would still get all the essentials you need from your food. But Adam asked the right question, which was what numbers you're at now. Now, if you told us that you're eating 100 grams of carbs, uh, but your fat was you know 200 and something grams, then I'd say we could probably cut from your, your fat. But your fat's okay. 120 grams of fat. A uh, guy your size, that many calories, 450 grams of carbs. Carbs will be easiest to cut. Yeah, you're set up for uh, actually a good good round of carb cycling. So eating okay. four, if you're eating four, 440 grams, um, I would then make my high day 500, and then I would do like a medium day at like three 300, and then a <clears throat> low day or two at like 200 or even 150. And then just cycle like that, okay. and uh, and let the carbohydrate and let pretty much keep everything else the same. Those you know medium and low days will average out to lower calories. Yeah, will average out to lower calories per week. You'll still have that you know that uh, high day that will feel good for those workout days, which I, I would try and time that uh, on days when you're lifting. Right, I wouldn't want to waste having a high carb okay. day and it be an off day. But uh, okay. yeah, I think you're set up perfect for that, and you wouldn't have to do much other than just. Uh, cycling through some carbohydrates for about a month or so. And I think you'd see some some good, I'd take a little bit longer to get 5% down, but I mean, say a month and a half uh, and you should be there. Yep. So my, my plan is, my plan is to go through this deficit for about 12 weeks. Is that a reasonable goal? 5% oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, half, okay. That's less than a half cool. percent a week. That's perfect. You can be as aggressive as a percent a week. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. Uh, that's pretty hard. You probably lose a little muscle with that, but I mean, five percent in twelve weeks, you should be able to keep a, a, a decent amount of muscle mass, if not all of it. I, I think in a month's time, you'll see a difference already. I think yeah. you're I, you're in a good place. You have a good amount of calories. You're eating good carbohydrates. Your your proteins balanced. Like you're, it sounds like you're in a, in a really <clears throat> healthy place. How's your uh, training? Are you following any maps programs? No, sir, I'm not. I, and actually, I just I just got an email on the uh, maps um, anabolic advanced, and yeah. I'm really I'm really tooling about um, getting into that. So, um, just been kind of doing my own thing. Um, just kind of being a student of of the nutrition and the the programming part, and just trying to uh, trying to learn my thing as well. Uh, but I'm really giving a hard consideration on the uh, give, anabolic. Give me advanced. a typical give me a typical lifting week. So um, I'm breaking it down into a, a push pull leg um, lower body um, day. Um, doing that push pull push pull lower body push pull lower body taking a day off. Um, I'm usually trying to get about uh, eight to ten eight to eleven exercises per workout. Uh, splitting it up to about um, three three exercises two exercises per per group um during during that program like you know like if it's a push day um three or four on chest um one or two on shoulder two or three on triceps um and then doing the same thing on the pool in the in the lower body days oh you're working out six days a week right now 
trying to. Yes, sir. Yeah, maps and a bulk advance would be great for you. Mm. That's our newest program. I think this will be the first one we're mm -hmm. giving away. I'll give you. I'll give that to you. You'll love oh, wow. it. I appreciate that. Yeah, you'll love it. That'll 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 put some muscle on you for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I you appreciate it, you guys. You got it, yeah. man. No problem. I um appreciate everything you guys are uh, you guys are putting out there. Uh, it's good, solid information, and uh, you know, that's why I, I wanted to come here and ask my question because I knew that the information I got from you guys, I get um, I get I get trusted. No problem. Awesome. Are those are those figurines in the back of yours, or are you in your kids' room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in my I'm in my office, and those are uh, those are bobbleheads from uh, baseball games, sporting uh, events that I uh, that I've been to. I'm a I'm a sports fan, good deal. Uh, specifically the uh, here in Houston. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's what that is. That's just a little decoration on my wall. No, they're mine. Good shit. Good shit. <laughs> good deal. Like, oh, you're in Justin's house. Follow up with yeah. this, Jeff. I actually would <laughs> love to hear. I'd love to hear how you go uh, through the program because you are a perfect candidate for the program and where you're at calorie wise. I think you're in a like. So I can't wait to hear your results. So follow back up with us. Let us know how it goes in the next couple months. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate everything that you guys do, and thank uh, you for thank you for helping me. You got right, it, man. Right on. I'll, I'll predict this right now. He'll follow Maps Anabolic Advanced. If he doesn't do too aggressive as, of a cut, I bet you his body weight doesn't change much. He'll drop body fat percentage and gain muscle. Yeah, he, yeah. this great place right now. Yep. I mean, where he's at, uh, you know, macro and calorie wise, uh, it, I think is is and then following a new program like that, I think is yeah, like be, do like a five hundred calorie cut max. Yeah. I mean, which keeps him high and his calories are so high anyway. Yeah, I think he'd be totally okay with yeah, that. He's gonna be good. Our next caller is Megan from California. Megan, how can we help you? Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance. I had to take this call in my car and it just started hailing like two <laughs> seconds ago. So if you hear it in the background. Um, Hail now. We'll work but, on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I had a question about, um, I just don't know whether or not you should bulk if you already have a pretty high body fat percentage. So um, for reference, I've gained like about 30 pounds since the beginning of the pandemic. And I'm trying to get back into um, strength training and losing body fat and building my metabolism back up. Um, and I'm kind of confused as to, you know, will your body use the existing fat that you have to build muscle, like as an energy storage source? Or um, like, do I need to be eating in a, an, in a caloric surplus in order to build muscle at the moment? And should I even be doing that? Or should I focus on cutting first? Megan, there's two, there's two parts to this uh, that we need to address. So first off, can your body use stored body fat as an energy source, which then can potentially help you build muscle or whatever? Yes, it can, although that's a tough way to do it. The body doesn't like to burn and gain at the same time, but it's possible. But the second part is, how do I know if I should bulk? Body fat percentage is one factor that I consider um, whether or not I put a client on a bulk. The other factors, which are more important to me, are how many calories you're currently eating, what are your energy levels like, how do you feel, okay? So do you know, are you tracking your calories? Do you know where you're at? Yeah, so um, I was at like 1750, uh -huh. and then I just went up to 1850. And, you know, that's another thing. Like, I'm going based off these online calculators of like what my what would be a deficit and what would be a surplus. And so, but at 1850 right now, I'm pretty much maintaining, but I'm also going to the gym. So I don't know okay. if I'm just how, putting on muscle. How long have you been at 1850? Uh, I'd say like four weeks. Oh, and you haven't gained any weight? No, not, not pounds on the scale. No. Awesome. You feeling stronger? Yeah, for sure. Excellent. I can like yeah. lift more for sure. Oh, that's great. Okay. Spot. So, so here's where I would determine whether or not we want to put you on a bulk or a cut. You want to look at the calories you're at and then think to yourself, can I go down from there and be comfortable at maintaining at that lower calorie? Uh, so if you're at 1850 and you want to lose body fat, you probably have to go down to something like 1350, which is low to maintain. So I'd probably <laughs> want you to slowly reverse diet till you get to a point that you can comfortably cut from. So probably around 2,500 calories, something like that, so that when you cut, you're sitting around 1850. And that's your cut calories. So the reverse diet would be slow. You would also do strength training. Get your metabolism to speed up. Uh, the ideal is that your body weight doesn't really change on the scale, but you do find yourself feeling a little leaner, a little more sculpted because you're building muscle as you're burning a little bit of body fat. And then from there, we cut. Does that, does that kind of make okay. sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So in order to reverse diet, would I just be like upping my calories by like 100 calories a week until like 
I uh, reached that point. I would actually, I would actually bump you a hundred to two hundred calories a week at simultaneously increasing your steps walking. So you have this nice gradual, like you're we're bumping the calories. And if you do a good job of bumping the steps by, I say like two thousand steps. So right now I see you're at six to eight thousand steps a day. Like next week, a good goal would be like, let's bump our calories, 200 calories, 200 calories a day, and also increase steps to 10,000 steps a day. Like that would be, and more than likely what you'll see happen is again, the scale probably won't move. And then I would try and do that again the next week or in two weeks from now. And I would keep incrementally increasing your steps and your calories until we get to a, a better place, say 25, 2600 calories, like Sal was saying. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Doug, do we Thanks, have we, we have a reverse dieting guide available, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. we do. Megan, I'm going to send that to you because that'll break it down in better detail. Also, what program are you following right yeah, now? Yeah, are you, are you following a MAPS program? No, I'm not following any of the MAPS programs. I've honestly probably looked at the list like 10 times and I can't figure out which one's like best for me. Anabolic. Um, yeah, let's yeah, go we're, MAPS we're, Anabolic. Yeah, start there yeah we're going to sure. put you on Anabolic. We'll send you MAPS Anabolic and the reverse awesome. dieting guide and then follow those and I think you'll you'll love the results. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Here's a, one, one last thing, Megan. I want you to give it yeah. follow up. Okay. Let us know how this is working out, you know, 60, 90 days from now. Let us know what happened. Give us a little review and, and tell us how your body feels. Heck yeah. Yeah, I definitely will do that. You yep. got it. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks for calling in. You know, th this is so like, uh, um, you know, old hat for us when we talk about this, like we're used to it, but to be somebody on the other end who's never done this before, or if yeah. you've heard about this for the first time, it almost doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like you're like, wait, increase my calories. I'm going to just gain but a I'm bunch of body fat. I'm trying to lose fat. weight. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there's so much flexibility with the metabolism. And what we're trying to do is speed up your metabolism, which makes weight loss more sustainable. Otherwise you end up in a position where lots of people have, have seen themselves where they cut their calories, end up losing weight, but then they're like, their maintenance calories is like 1100 calories. Well, Nobody can, I mean, how can you maintain that for the rest of your life? It's a really tough position to be in. So, you know, I wouldn't, I actually would never tell my clients that <clears throat> I'm actually putting them on a bulk or even tell them that I'm even trying to increase their calories. All I, what I would say to them is I, I would target foods. So like we would, we would assess her diet. She would come back <clears throat> and she'd say, Hey, I'm eating, you know, 1800 calories or whatever, to, or she was started at 1700, I'm 1700 calories. I look at her protein, I look at her fiber, I look at her sugars. I look at, her, I look at all the foods I, and I, and then I would look at something in there and all always. And when I look at it, assess a diet, there's always either too high of sugar, not enough protein, not enough fiber, yeah. not enough healthy fats. There's always something that I can add to her diet. And it's usually all those. Right. Mm -hmm. It's normally all of them, but there's always at least something that I can add to her diet. And instead of telling her we're cutting or we're bulking, I just go, you know what? What I want you to do is make sure you get this every day or add this much right. every single day right. or hit this amount of grams of protein every day, knowing that what, what I'm doing and, and then just slowly increase her that way without her, her ever really knowing that I'm slowly increasing her caloric intake and reverse dieting her out. Instead, we're targeting foods that her body wants and needs, and that's what's going to help her overall with her metabolism and her fat loss goal. Yeah. That way they don't get in their own head of like, yeah. what? This well, behavioral the, hack. Yeah, this well, it is. is making me bulk. Like, this is yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, the words you use make a big difference as a trainer's oh, yeah. coach. So you say bulk. Dude, counting backwards was always real effective. Well, look, effective. There's reverse diet and bulk are the same exact thing. Yeah. The reason why reverse diet was it was a term that was invented is because nobody wanted to bulk <laughs> when they want to lose weight. Reverse diet sounds different and it gets connected with the faster metabolism. Bulk and reverse diet are the same thing. They're both calorie surpluses. Yep. So the words you use make a big difference. Our next caller is Lori from California. Hi, Lori. How can we help you? Hey, hi. Um, I have a question about proteins and um, specifically like the different, different kinds of proteins um, and what I really need to be looking for when I'm trying to meet my um, protein goals. And I'm coming from um, a place where, you know, I started lifting about 13 years ago um, and started with a, a bodybuilding trainer <clears throat> right away and fell in love with it and always kind of trained like a bodybuilder, never had a, never followed the, the diets because um, I had my own eating that worked for me, <clears throat> always super strong um, and fit. And then COVID happened and uh, menopause at the same time. And um, so I was, 
I was, you know, not lifting as heavy. I was lifting in my, my garage by myself and lost muscle. And at the same time, I was cooking waffles for my kids who were home all day. And we all kind of gained weight, gained fat, lost muscle. And it, it went around the middle like it does in menopause. And um, so the last year or so, I've been working on getting it off. And what I found that works for me is intermittent fasting. And so I've been eating, you know, in eight hour windows. And then now for the last several months back in the gym, lifting heavy and trying to gain back muscle while still um, eating within this window to try to keep the, you know, menopause belly away. So I started, you know, I was fasting overnight. And so I was working out fasting because I work out early morning and I felt strong and uh, moving the weight, but I wasn't like, you know, my, my muscles weren't getting bigger. Um, so I started using this perfect amino product that's supposed to be not break a fast and be 99% bioavailable. And I'm wondering, you know, is that, does that work? Is that, you know, something that can work with the fast? And then the last, the last couple of months, I actually started taking, um, drinking a, a protein with carb while I'm working out. And that seems to be helping, but I don't know. I just, what's the best thing for me to do while still trying to like, you know, keep my eating window narrower because besides the belly fat, it also makes me feel better all around. I'm sleeping better. I'm more energetic, you know, so there you go. Lori, when you're, when you're doing the intermittent fasting, do you, are you also tracking the total grams of protein that you're having in the day? Do you know what that is? Um, I was not, I have been lately though. I've been really trying to get, um, 170 at least figure that's probably about what I weigh 170. Um, and I'm, I'm doing that, but I'm including these perfect aminos in the morning and the evening, which they say is like equivalent to, you know, 30 grams of whey protein. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> yeah, amino acids do break a fast. Um, so anything, amino acids would break a fast, any fats would break a fast, any sugars would break a fast. Nonetheless, the, the benefits that you're getting from fasting, we're going to talk about the energy separately. Okay. The weight loss effects that people get from fasting really is from the reduction in calories that the structured eating tends to, uh, move people in the, in the direction of. So when people eat in a structured way where they say, this is my eating window, when you look at their total calories, they tend to eat less. That's where the weight loss comes from. Now, as far as energy and how you feel is concerned, um, some people do notice better gut health when they have a larger window of not eating uh, because of the reduced activity of the gut. Um, you know, I'm one of those people where I just, I tend to feel better if I don't eat for a certain period of time because my gut health tends to be a bit sensitive. So that could be part of the issue. Although I would also look at the types of foods you're eating. You may be eating foods that aren't di necessarily digesting well for you. Um, and I would also revisit eating outside of that window to see if your body feels different now by eating outside of it. As far as uh, all the other stuff you're, you're talking about is concerned, it really boils down to tracking your total calories and your macros. Um, if your eating window feels good for you, then that's great. If it doesn't make a difference, if you experiment moving out of it um, and it doesn't make a difference, then it really doesn't matter. The benefits of fasting tend to be pretty much relegated to the the the, the the spiritual effects where people can break, uh, attachments to food, where they can find themselves not reaching for things when they feel a particular way. Um, there are some potential gut health benefits that come from eating in a fasted or from, uh, eating in a, in a window, but that's very individual. So I hope that answers some of your questions. The, the greatest, <clears throat> the greatest challenge that I have with my clients and my female clients in particular <clears throat> with intermittent fasting is consistently hitting their protein intake. Um, and if you were a little bit short of 170, that's not a big deal. But if you look after, you know, two or three weeks of tracking consistently and you see, you know, 30% of the days, you're sub a hundred, uh, grams of protein, uh, this could be a, a major reason why we're not building muscle. We're not getting stronger. So I would definitely assess that. 
I think the the idea of the eight hour window, I mean, if you could open the window to now a 10 hour window and get an extra 30 grams of protein in to make sure you hit that, I think that's uh, more valuable than following this, this structure yeah. that they've laid out for the points that Sal's making. Um, but that would be the main thing that I would. And then as far as the amino acids, trying to compare it to 30 grams away, I wouldn't do that. I think amino acids, when you're low calorie, you're an endurance trainer, it has muscle sparing benefits to it. But as far as building muscle off of using amino acids, I, if you were a client, I'd far, I, it, we would be pushing to get that through whole foods. That's, I would want you to, yeah. does that mean that occasionally you do that because you're on the go and it's better than nothing? Absolutely. But my goal would be like, we want to, I want you to eat your 140 to 170 grams of protein every day. Yeah. So, so proteins are, are chains of amino acids. Um, and a, a full complete chain is what, what makes a protein. And within that are essential amino acids. These are the amino acids that you have to eat because your body can't produce them itself. And then within those essential amino acids are things like branch chain amino acids, which have their own particular value. Um, so if you're eating a high protein, now the data on amino acid supplementation is very, very good. There's a lot of studies done on amino acid supplementation, both essential amino acids, non-essential amino acid supplementation, individual amino acid supplementation, branch chain amino acid supplementation. And the data is pretty clear. If your protein is high, supplementing with amino acids does nothing. It's, it's a waste of money. If your protein is below what would be considered optimal, then it makes a difference. So let's say you're a 170 pound female uh, and you're not obese. So that's closer to your lean body mass and you're consuming 60 grams of protein a day. Supplementing with essential amino acids or branched chain amino acids would make a big difference. But if you're eating 170 grams of protein a day pretty consistently, you can throw away your amino acid supplements not doing anything for you. It's not, it's, it's, just, it's just a waste of uh, money. And the marketing about it not breaking a fast is it's just that, by the way. It's pure marketing. A fast is water. Um, uh, anything outside of that, quote unquote, breaks a fast. The, the one, one last thing I want to comment on is sometimes people get so stuck in this rigid eating window that they find themselves cramming more food in this eating window so that they can have this period of time without eating. And they find themselves almost stuffing their face. Mm -hmm. And it tends to become this like binge restrict model of eating where they find themselves like, I got to eat all this food because I only have so many hours. And then, okay, I can't eat anything now because I'm in my, my fasted period. If you were my client, I'd tell you to move outside of that now. And I'd say, let's track total calories. Let's look at your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. It's perfectly fine to work out fasted, especially if you work out real early because you don't want to have to w wake up earlier just to eat. But then I'd have a meal afterwards. And if it feels better to eat less in the morning, then that's, that's perfectly fine. Are you following any kind of structured plan for your resistance training? I know you said you resistance train, right? Yeah, I'm training with a trainer. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, How many times a week? Four right now. Yeah, you're that's you're per, you're doing good. If it's a good trainer, you're doing good then. Yeah. So I mean that's 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 pretty much it. If if you're consistently eating that many grams of protein, you're even the type because I noticed in your question you asked about protein bioavailability. That also right. that also doesn't matter if your protein intake is high. If you're eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight, bioavailability doesn't make a difference. If you're eating less protein than what's considered optimal, then bioavailable bioavailability makes a big difference. Like I said, if I gave like the example I gave earlier, if you were just eating like 60 grams of protein a day, well, then it would make a difference if it was coming from plant protein versus animal protein or egg versus soy, for example. But at that many grams of protein, you're getting so many amino acids, so many essential amino acids, so many branched amino acids. You're hitting everything and then some that the bioavailability, the you know amino acid supplementation, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, great. Okay. Cool. Does, that, does that help, Lori? Yes. Okay, Thank good. you, guys. Okay, you got it. Thanks for calling in, Lori. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Boy, the fitness industry really confuses the hell out of people oh, with yeah. their marketing, doesn't it? Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Eat our amino acid supplement and it doesn't break a fast. <laughs> what? But yet, it, but, but yet it's comparable to 30 grams of whey protein. <laughs> yeah, How, what did they call so this? So it's Is magical? They, we, <laughs> hey, we called this. Yeah, when, when fasting became yeah. the new diet, yeah. like go back to like- well, They called it anabolic fasting. That's, yes. They like tried to brand it like that. Bro, we, we called it before that even came before out. Before that, we said- I oh, remember. We said yeah, yeah, fasting yeah. is so hard to make money off of because it's eating nothing. We said, just wait till the supplements come out. <laughs> 
where they're going to tell you to take this. I remember that was yeah, what I promoted know. us to write the guide back then. <laughs> yes. We wrote the guide back then and we said, watch the next thing to come after this would be all these same that we called the same thing with keto. Keto yeah. did the same thing. When the t keto diet came out, it said, oh, now now watch all the keto supplements that will be attached to the keto yep. diet. Yeah. It's just, it's marketing. But I venture to, I mean, just her having the structure of that. I think that's everything in terms that is. of like how she's been seeing benefits. And uh, you could tell like certain people like kind of resist a lot of like tracking and, and that initial uh, real you know, comprehensive look at like, you know, their, their habits. And that, that's just, if you're going to really move the needle, that's where you got to start. So I know it's possible that she's, she's doing what she said, but in my experience, rarely ever does my female client hit 170 grams well, of 170 is hard for me to in, 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 in while also intermittent fasting. I know. So eight hour eating window. That's a lot of protein. That's, that's a hard a, eight hours. That's task. A, that is a very hard task. Yeah. That's a hard task for a 230 pound dude like me, yeah. much less a girl like Especially that. From small. Whole foods. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would challenge that as far as, you know, how long are you consistently hitting this? And she doesn't yeah, need to hit sometimes one. Sometimes they hit it once. And they're like, yeah, right, right. They, yeah. They, you count it. One, you have a, a really high day one day that you, you hit that and you're like, oh, I hit about that. It's like, okay, well, I, let's consistently track for a few weeks and let's see how many days are we. And she doesn't necessarily need to get 170. 170 is like on the optimal high end. I mean, she could health be totally fine and see good results from, you know, 130, 140. But I would venture to guess that there's quite a few sub 100, sub 90 grams of protein days in there and getting that balanced out. Uh, I think would benefit her. And then also we did, I know Justin was starting to allude to the programming. It'd be interesting if, you know, she could have a good trainer who's training her like a bodybuilder still, but I wonder how, how similar her routine has looked for a long time. Right. And also how high of intensity that she's doing four days a week with menopause at her age. And yeah. like that. That's why I said, if it's a good trainer, it matters. Yeah, yeah. Cause so, it could be a bad trainer. Yeah. But you all, I mean, if you hired a trainer, you think what, what, what client didn't think their trainer yeah, was a good you trainer. You may just have her do jumping jacks. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> you know, who you're a circuit training. Who yeah. knows? No, I mean, I, I, she likes training like a bodybuilder. So that way of training I don't necessarily think it's bad, but maybe she's not. She's been doing the same thing for so long, and she would benefit. Right, maybe a from, low rep. Uh, yeah, switch something, up. something different. Our next caller is Ian from Washington. Ian, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, fellas, how's it going? Good. Uh, All right, man. Hey, um, thanks for having me on. I, I uh, just quick, quick introduction. Just uh, like everybody else, love your show. Love the positivity and the realism that you bring to the table. Um, so much misinformation out there. Uh, it's really good to be able to have a reliable source to go to. Um, love that you guys talk about your, your wives and your kids and, and just everything that you bring to that uh, sphere as well. So, um, yeah, I just really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank First you. Of all, guys, uh, for my wife, Jody, she's a cancer survivor and uh, really started hitting the weights pretty solid uh, about three years ago. And uh, she came home one day and uh, she's like, honey, you, you got you to gotta hear these guys. They are totally your people. So I've been listening to you guys ever since. Um, the, the best fitness advice I think I've ever gotten uh, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So just a little bit of fitness background. I've been lifting weights pretty routinely for about 30 years, uh, training in Kyokushin Karate for about 33 years. Um, are, are, I don't know if you're familiar with Kyokushin Karate. I am. I know you mentioned it before, but um, it's full contact, bare knuckle. Um, they refer to it as the strongest karate. It's it's no joke. You're familiar maybe with uh, George St. Pierre. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Fam I'm familiar with the, with this. Uh, this is like, I, you know, I don't want to not, not offend anybody, but this is like the real deal karate. Like if you watch uh, bare knuckle competitions on YouTube, like this is what they're, this is the type of karate that you see. It's pretty, it's pretty it's not gnarly. like the Karate Kid version. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to anybody else. No but it, is, but it, is, it is not slap and tickle karate for sure. No. So, um, you know, the, my longtime instructor, Hanshi Roman he, re he recently informed me that I'm going to be grading for my next Don test uh, at the World Cup in Santiago. And, um, and that's in, um, in Chile in, uh, December, 2023. And the exam is going to be about eight to nine hours long. And it includes what they call a power test, which is fitness, push-ups, sit-ups, you know, all of that stuff to exhaustion. 
and then um, sort of foundational martial skills uh, followed by kata and weapons. And then fighting happens at the very end when you're the most tired. So, uh, you know, you got two hours left in a nine hour exam and you, you're faced with 50 to 60 full contact fights uh, anywhere from a minute, a minute and a half, uh, no rest. Um, you're fighting anybody they put in front of you from anywhere around the world. So, um, you know, you, you really have to be in, in top condition. And, and I don't, I don't want to just survive the exam. I want to slay it. I want to, I want to, I want to come out dominant. And, um, so, um, just, to, on the other side of that, I've been doing weight training, uh, for a long time. I just finished week eight of anabolic. And just as a quick aside, it is hands down the best weightlifting program that I have ever done. And I'm not just saying that because you guys are in front of me. It's, it's seriously the best program that I have done. Um, I'm up about four to five pounds of lean muscle, uh, down a couple of percent in body fat. Uh, as a 53-year-old, I I have never felt this good that into, into my test. Um, I've, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm getting, a, about 2,900 to 3000 calories per day, hitting 200 to 220 grams of protein, uh, almost no, um, uh, processed food, all whole food, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and so, Really, what, I, what I'm trying to be able to do is figure out the right path forward to be able to just dominate the test. So I'm doing the weight training now. Uh, in another four weeks, I'll finish anabolic. And my question is, what should my next steps be? What, uh, I've, I've bought four or five programs from you guys, including you know, performance and cardio. And I just want to know, like, what do you recommend to take the next step after anabolic, what should the next program be sequencing uh, to be able to hit that just perfect? What do you think? Great, great question. Yeah. Very specific question too. So I, I like stuff like this. Well, your, your test is in December. It is. Yeah. Okay. Early December. <clears throat> you want to give yourself about two months, uh, uh, you know, before December. So October, you're going to be training mostly the way that your test will be done for your black belt. Okay. So you want to give yourself eight weeks of very specific training before you go to the test. So that means that your strength training starting in October is going to be pretty much relegated to mobility mm -hmm. and correctional work. You're not trying to get stronger. You're not trying to build muscle. You're trying to get really good at the test. You're trying to get really good at the sparring, uh, at the fighting, at the push-ups, the sit-ups, the things that you said that they're going to be testing you on. And then you yeah. want to do maybe mobility work and correctional exercise work during that period of time because you'll be pushing your body to the limit and the idea is to avoid injury, okay? Now, leading up to that, right now, we're far out. So you can focus on continuing to build muscle, but the closer you get to that October time, the less the focus is going to be on muscle building and the more the, the focus will be on stamina. And that's kind of how you want to lead up to it. What you don't want to do is try to build, try to build strength, try to build muscle while also simultaneously getting ready for the test all within that, that month or two before, because that's just too much. And it, it, you won't be better at the test. If anything, you'll be worse doing something like that. So do you, okay. So the only difference that I had with my advice was less a shorter, even time frame from, uh, do you think he needs eight weeks? I would have said four to six. So you said hey, you're, you're going eight. I would have said four to six because of his conditioning and his level where he's at already. Do you really think he's going to need that much time getting ready for the test? I don't know what kind of, that's a good question. Ian, how close would you say you are now to be able to pass your black belt test with flying colors? Let's say you were to take it tomorrow. What would be the part that would kill you the most? Or do you feel like you'd be able to go through it right now? Probably my, um, my respiratory volume, I would say, okay. uh, is, is the thing that I would have <laughs> to work on the most. Um, my assumption was that I was just going to do the building part between now and June, July, maybe somewhere in there. And then, and then start to sort of titrate in some other things. Um, the skills part, you know, this is my sixth Don test. Yeah. I've, I've done this before. So I know what the test is like. Um, 
for my fourth Don, I was very prepared. So uh, I was doing 10 minute rounds of jump rope and then push ups to exhaustion, another 10 minutes of rope, sit ups to exhaustion, another 10 minutes. So that, that really um, helped me develop the, the cardio um, and then the constant change in, in heart rate. Um, so anywhere from four to six weeks out, I think, um, yeah, that, that's, that's great advice. Real, real quick, what's the elevation in Santiago? Is that high elevation? Uh, that's a good question. It's going to be a little bit higher than what we have here. I'm at 1800 here. Um, and can, you know, we have hills around here that I can, I can do, uh, you know, sprints and what have you, um, and intervals, but, uh, Let's see. Doug, it's it's, yeah, it's 1870. Oh, okay. So, okay. I was just, I just want to make sure because if it was really high elevation hmm. compared to where you're at now, I would have been like, the, I would get there early and, and try to get So I, I want to, I want to just, you, I think you probably have, all of us probably have the, the, probably the best advice, but I would have went four to six weeks is when I would have transitioned him. I actually would have kept him in anabolic with performance, uh, mobility days from now till then. What do you think about that? I mean, that would be okay, but I would even just go pure uh, performance. Mass performance would probably be the most appropriate program yeah. leading up to that period of, you know, eight to six weeks before the test. Well, mainly because the phasing is switched up yep. and it naturally has that sort exactly. of like speed power element in there and it has the multi-directional strength. Um, so yeah, you could actually end up duplicating performance. And then I was thinking too, like maybe even a maps 15 yep. sort of like leading into those last, you know, three, four weeks, yep. like up into your competition. Uh, mm -hmm. so then it's just really just hyper-focused skill mobility. Uh, but the maps 15 will at least yeah. keep a lot of that strength there. You know, the challenge Ian with something like this is we're talking so far out that none of us are able to follow you along and right, adjust and feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And adjust accordingly exactly but, need right. but i hope you're getting the but. gist of what we're saying right where if you were to look at like the block of training from now until then it's like strength and muscle then movement mobility then stamina and endurance with a focus on preventing injuries or correctional exercise so you notice nagging areas of pain or you know movement dysfunction then you kind of focus on that while you're doing your you know your competition type uh specific type of training but mm -hmm. Also consider this, Ian, when you add stuff in, you got to take other stuff out. So sure. what, you, what you don't want to do is like build all the strength and then say, okay, I'm going to keep going at that pace with the strength. Now let me throw in tons more stamina and cardio. You, that's the biggest mistake that athletes make when they train uh, in season. Just pile on top. Yeah, they add to their off season. They just add to it and they just keep adding. They try to keep everything all at once. And then the injury, injury rate goes to the roof. Now what Justin said about MAPS 15, I mean – you know, we, we interviewed, um, oh, what was his name? Was it Schlesinger? Yeah. That Corey, we interviewed? Yep, yeah. And, he, he, and he's, he has his athletes do like, you know, he calls them exercise snacks, like 10 minutes of exercise a day with strength training mm -hmm. on top of their traditional training. And that maintained their strength phenomenally. Did you listen to that episode, Ian? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Go back and listen to that one. It's Corey Schlesinger. I'll have Doug look up uh, the actual number it was. But even though he's talking about basketball, the application of uh, strength training to their sport would apply to what we're totally. talking about right now with you. Yeah, because he talks about off season and in season training. And the in season training, yeah. they don't do they don't go and do strength training, you know, twice a week for an hour. He does like 10, 15 minutes a day. Yeah, and he a, finds that it's way more successful. It's I little, would agree with that. Yeah, it's a little different because like he has a longer season of lots of different opportunities for them to perform at a high level. You're trying to peak at like for one event. And so yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, to kind of like lead into that, I think the timing of that is real crucial. Yeah. And in my experience, Ian, when, with someone at your level, so when you're talking about a black belt, the two things that tend to uh, get in the way when, when they're in competition, the two biggest obstacles are usually injury being number one yep, and then stamina being number two. It's usually not anything else. The skill and technique is there. Yep. Strength is typically there if you've been training for a long time and like training, like really training, but it's mm -hmm. it, injury would be number one. That would be the number one thing that I would be looking at the closer I got to competition. So you notice any, you know, movement or mobility issues or nagging issues, then really focus on making sure you do correctional exercise and, and avoiding injury because that's a big you know roadblock. Like you hurt yourself, then you're kind of screwed and stamina would be the second one. And that's because stamina comes and goes so quickly. Like you could stop training for stamina and within two weeks, like it's like you feel like 50% of it's gone. 
So those would be the two things that focus on the closer you get to the competition or to, to the test. That makes total sense. One of my rationales for, for building at this phase is, uh, you know, I'm going to be fighting these big Iranians and Russians and, and half the time they're juiced. Uh, well, maybe all the time. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, <laughs> and it's the truth. Um, and so, you know, they're generating proportionally more force. So my body has to be able to absorb that force and more muscle mass is going to help me do that. Plus, you know, technique, breathing and, and all that. Yeah. Um, but then um, I, the injury is a really good point. Uh, as I started lifting heavier and my volume kept going up, basically every workout during anabolic, uh, I did notice that I had some ligament, a uh, little, little bit of ligament strain in the, the left elbow and what have you. And so made some small modifications that's simmering down. Uh, but I want to be at a thousand percent when I, when I hit the yeah. tatsumi. Yeah. I like maps performance for you now, yeah. right now maps yeah. performance. Cause that's, that's so good for what you're saying. And look, you, look, I don't need to tell you this. So I'm saying this mainly for other people who may be watching when you're training for a specific sport, you don't want to sacrifice technique training for uh, athletic training, because like in your case, you can build a lot of muscle, lose some technique and you end up not having as much power in your punch, even though you're bigger and stronger, you're not going to hit as hard. So, you know, maintain that technique training the, the entire time. Um, or, or what could also happen is you gain muscle. You don't train the technique with that muscle. Now you're more awkward because you're at a different body size. Even that extra four or five pounds changes your body size a little bit and your timing Absolutely. is just a little bit different. So two, two things. One, uh, Ian, uh, the Corey episode is 19, uh, 27. Thank you. Uh, uh, the second thing was, uh, do you already own maps prime pro yet? I do not. Oh, that okay. Great, so yeah. this is what we want to do. Uh, if you don't have uh, performance, we're going to send that to you. In Maps, I have performance. Okay, you do have that. And so you're familiar then how every other day is the mobility days, right? So mm -hmm. we we create them for you in there. But what I want you to do, and you're a self-aware and experienced person, you could totally do this, is I want you to utilize Maps Prime Pro and and go through all the different you don't like not literally go through but yeah. read and watch Even all the specific uh, yes moves, yeah. and then you can start to trade out mm -hmm. the the mobility days for movements that are more specific to you like you address you said something about your elbow right so there might there's some wrist cars and shoulder cars in maps prime pro that if you were my client instead of us following performance to where it's generically laid out i would actually pull out two exercises that are less important to you that you don't have issues with and i would implement the wrist cars and the shoulder cars in there so use prime pro as a way to supplement some of the uh, mobility drills that we have already generated for you in performance and create mm -hmm. your own kind of mobility flow that i think would be of yeah. tremendous value yeah. for you ian I like ian if i I'll, i want to let you in our forum for free but i would love for you to to follow up with us i'd like to see a video of the test or just hear about how you did man yep yeah my wife's gonna my wife's gonna video it and uh, take some shots and so um yeah, it'll be, uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, mindset is the, is the first hurdle, right? So you got to go into it, looking forward to it rather than being like, shit, these guys are going to kill me. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Yeah, you got to crush it, man. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. for you. Me too. Hey, you guys rock. I really appreciate your time and the advice. Uh, really valuable. Really quickly. Last thing, should I be doing like maps cardio or really just focus on performance? Um, and prime pro like yeah no stamina wise i think what you did in the past that worked for you would be perfectly fine to do now okay yeah perfect yep awesome all right appreciate it fellas thanks ian all right ian appreciate all right. it have a great day you got it yeah you ever watch Shoot, what, uh, a, what a cool thing to bro yeah you, have you guys yeah. ever watched uh these tournaments uh, is it tournaments? like a kumite? So I mean they wear a gi yeah and you can't punch to the face but you can kick a knee to the head and it's full contact to the body. So yeah. everything to the body and legs and then to the head, it's only kicks and knees. Damn. And they, boom, 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 boom. They really. So they come in attack style. They get points. They back out. Uh, yeah, I mean, you people get knocked out. That's yeah. how you lose because you get kicked or knee to the head. 
And bo- so, the body shots are so gnarly. What's what is what is the theory on why they would allow head he, head kicks but not head punching? I don't head. know. It's probably to make it more technical. Nah, or I don't, difficult. Or just, I think it's just you know like they take thing. certain things out to make it so it's more accessible. Probably, although you know this may be a tournament. I don't think it is, but there may be a tournament where they allow everything, mm-hmm. like full full on full strikes to the head and the whole deal. But I, the ones I've seen were. Punches, kicks, knees to the body, and then just knees and kicks to the head. And I'm telling you, these guys hit to the body like. Oh, so man. for the audience, le- for the audience, let's let's extend the dialogue a little bit on why why we would have been a little bit different originally on our 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 recommendation. My only reason why I would have said four to six is I know how quick that you can get you can build stamina, yeah. especially yeah. in in a, 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 a advanced lifter and in his sport like i mean this guy is not like yeah it's not wrong what you said wasn't wrong yeah so yeah. so i i would have allowed him to strength train longer and then get stamina focused Here, in the last here's why seconds. i said i i would have said eight weeks because i what you're saying was right too um the reason why i would have given him eight weeks is to avoid that risk of injury yeah. potential that that is high when you're focusing on strength training with someone like this so it's like okay let's give you two months uh, before your competition where we take out the heavy strength training because, you know, even if you're getting stronger each time, it like you said. It may be a distraction to yep. you towards the skill. Well, so then yep. maybe the blend is somewhere between what all three of us said, which is I like Justin's MAPS 15 recommendation. Yep. Uh, let's start MAPS 15 at like eight weeks yeah. uh-huh. out and allowing him to do that and then allow him to make the decision like, oh, I'm still feeling amazing right now. Yeah. And if he, if he, you know, six start weeks, tapering it yeah, off. start tapering out. And yeah. then maybe he only needs the last three to four weeks yeah. where no weight training at all. Yeah. And it's just skills and stamina yeah. stuff. So yeah, no, it, it'll be re- interesting to see how he does, man. Yeah. And another thing about these guys is their, they, their hands are made like rocks. They, they literally condition their hands, their forearms, against their board, shins. Just the one oh, inch punch. Yeah. I mean, I was a guy that I used to train with that in jujitsu, but he also was a black belt in this style. And if you he would you know hold up his hand, his knuckles were like this big. Yeah, it's like oh my god, like that's uh, that's brutal. Did I read that he's a, a PhD too? Did I read that somewhere? Did I? Yeah, he's, he's like a, a professor. Oh, he's a yeah. professor too. Yeah, he didn't even say that. Super accomplished gentleman. What kind of professor? What is he? What is he? Cell molecular and biology. Mo- yep. Oh wow, so he knows his shit too. Yep. Yeah, he, what a I love hearing testimonials like that. Fifty three years yeah. old, been what a unique for uh, guy. 30, Thirty yeah. something years, knows a smart dude, and then to that's such a compliment, right? Totally. Such a cool compliment. Hey, check this out. If you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. You can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Yeah. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 